how to act in this society, in this world. So acting in the world is mostly acting in the society and uh, human life is about relating with people. We are social animals. So it is very difficult for an individual to survive alone. Even if you are a kind of renunciate or sadhu or something, you will need to go back to the village to get a little bit of oil or um, spices, salt, something or the other. This is not totally useless for a seeker, this question, because most of us are seekers while being a part of the society. Most of us have not left the society, even though some of us have minimized our interactions. Only those which are most needed, only those interactions we are engaging in. Otherwise, we are with our own practice or our own books or videos or whatever. So, this question, what are the ways of getting something done, is still re relevant for a seeker. We are not free from the need to interact with the society. There are a lot many teachings that are circling in your mind right now. Like, I need to interact with everybody with love only. Love and compassion. You see, that is the standard teaching. How should I behave with others? And one very solid, canned answer is with love and compassion. There is no other way to behave. And then there must be some more deep kind of people in the spiritual fields who will say, minimize the karmic load when you interact with somebody. And that is highly technical thing to discuss. So what should be my action so that the action is rendered fruitless? How should I act? That is a very big subject. I told you this, this, questions, this question sounds so innocent. It's a childish question, but we can, we can take it very, very deep from a spiritual point of view. And uh, there will be some more kind of up in the air kind of seekers who will say, well, nothing is happening. So I don't do anything anyway. So whatever must happen will happen. And I should not even think about <laughs> how to get things done. There is no doer, nobody to do. And, you know, blah, blah, blah. So, depending on the kind of seeker, there will be an answer. And I have found something very funny that none of these answers will get the work done. <laughs> that is the problem with these answers. They sound so nice on book, on paper. Totally useless when you are operating in the Maya. Remember, the spiritual principles, the truths, they are totally useless in Maya. It is like you know all the rules of the cricket and you try to apply them in football. Is it going to work? No. In Maya, act with Maya. Play the game. So, I, I mean, I'm not ashamed of saying that I also answer in the same way that these answers, you see, love and compassion. You know. What else am I going to say? You see, this is the politically correct answer. But today, since this is our chit-chat, this is our Sunday Q&A, and I usually drift away from the standard teaching today also. I was thinking about these things because recently I had to get few things done and none of the spiritual teaching proved useful. And then the mind falls back into habit that I tried to get it done using the old habits. So, you know, that produ produces a lot of suffering. Interacting with people is a big cause of suffering for a seeker. Why is that? Because ignorance. Once you have uh, gotten out of ignorance, even a little bit, the ignorant person is going to become a pain. He is going to be very, very irritating. So, many of you must have had this kind of experience that 
you were one of them and life was cool it was it was okay you see but uh, as soon as you got out of this gutter of ignorance now it, you cannot look back there you, you don't want to go there back you don't want to do anything with the world anything with the people especially people who are ignorant by ignorant i don't mean those who don't have any knowledge of vedas shastras philosophy no not that kind of ignorant ignorance is very deep ignorance is very basic ignorance is not knowing what i am that's all and every kind of ignorance then stems out of it that is the root and then the whole tree of ignorance sprouts of it so you can see this ignorance in the behavior of people and society is nothing but a collection of people on which unfortunately i am dependent as a human being as the, as this body mind this illusory structure now what so this is the problem your all spiritual teaching will be left without any use forget about compassion and love forget about enlightening people and getting your work done no they are not interested you see and i am not saying that don't be compassionate i am not saying don't try to educate people no 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 and that is not the point the point is even if you tried that your your task may or may not get done you may not get through the society human life is essentially interaction with the society look at it like this hardly we cannot live alone it is kind of very risky you will die simply in a week and you cannot be totally engaged in the society you will become crazy like them so <laughs> you, you must be in the world while living out of the world chanak gives us a um, hint here how to get it done and many of you know this sutra this formula it's in sanskrit it's called sam dam dand bhed i am going to attempt english translation and it will be my translation you see so sam means cooperation dam means transaction barter dand means punishment and bhed means deceit so many some people are going to translate it a little bit differently but these are the translations that i arrived at so these four methods will get your work done nothing else nothing else i mean you can try you can experiment cooperation is the best you can be compassionate you can be loving you can be forgiving if the other person the one you are dealing with is cooperative this is the ideal case isn't it the win win case very like a dream come true that who oh, i'm ready to cooperate i'll do whatever you want sir and okay it is done and he won't even ask for money so see the money part is the second one it is transaction barter so i'm not talking about cooperation with money i'm talking about somebody who wants to simply help you to get your work done that's all so it is so rare <laughs> it is like gold you see very very rare even your relatives are not going to do anything for you remember without getting something in return no not at all you can you see get a little bit of examples of the sam or cooperation or love the work done or the help that comes out of love in very intimate relations just like mother and child father and son and husband and wife and lovers and so on you see there will be one there will be one person or not even one sometimes who will be <laughs> who will cooperate with you who will do something for you with his or her will because it makes them happy you see it is very very rare and that also will happen once in a while once in a 10 times once in 20 times otherwise they are normal they are ordinary when you are in uh, society when you are in uh, especially in trouble some situations when everything is going wrong then especially you will find that 
no body corporates no body so what should a seeker do because this ideal is really ideal it looks good only on paper you see it will happen i'm not saying there are no no such people left in the world who will not do anything for you while love i'm not saying that there are and very very rare so the second is the dam which means a transaction barter payment money or doing something in return give and take now my practical experience is only this one works for me <laughs> if your friend thinks that you can be useful he will help you if the thing that you are useless they will ignore you and in a relation also as long as the happiness is coming from the other well yes i'll do something for you and no you are not doing what i'm saying okay bye bye so all the relations are barter relations in human society now, some people will say no my father is not you know like this my mother is very very selfless and all so that they come in the first category then they come in the cooperative people there will be one or two i'm not saying it's it's not not that bad you see society is not all bad a majority of it is what i'm going to describe now and uh, this will get work done mostly through strangers and uh, people you don't know and uh, just good people good social people they will do something if they are paid well if you are useful for them if they think that you can be useful for them and there are some very interesting cases a beautiful woman can get the things done you see even though the other person does not get anything but you see there is a psychological factor here uh, we are evolved like this there is a hope in the heart of that man that some day probably he will be able to impress that woman and so he goes and does the thing it is not cooperation it is not love it is not compassion forget about this there is an intention there it looks like love <laughs> it's not it is transaction he is trying to secure a mate and the behavior is automatic you see by ignorance i mean only that automatic action pre programmed conditioned without awareness without intelligence that is ignorance now you can you can see you know 99.99% people will be doing their actions like this their in your interactions will be like this it does not matter if you are enlightened it does not matter you are just you know walked in to this planet earth from heaven you are you are going to face the music so there is the third formula now dand which is punishment now they are not cooperative no love they are not going to do your job even you have paid it even if you have paid now uh, or they are not interested in your money they don't want to deal with you but you have this important work now so the chanak case saying that employ punishment actually he has written this these things for a king instruction manual for kings so but i found it very very useful you see that's i'm discussing this and this is very entertaining also so i don't recommend this for seekers it is recommended for powerful people remember he is telling this to a king for a seeker you may be able to use this once in a while like your child is not behaving you know punish the child this is how you get the things done or you have paid some merchant some shopkeeper he is not delivering you goods or he has given you something you see something um, which is fake which is a duplicate which, which does not work the parcel came empty now you can threaten with punishment you will you can say that i am going to go to police and in your mind you are saying well that is a punishment for myself not for him <laughs> so something like this you see you brought a property and then it is uh, not proper then you you say i'll go to court and so on you say that is punishment and uh, it works only when everything else fails only when there is a fear in the other you will need to sense this first 
is he going to be afraid or is he going to come and kill me? You see, don't use punishment on somebody who is stronger than you. So, he, I don't know what, what Chanak said about this. I mean, this is the uh, precaution that you must take. Do not use punishment on each and everybody. They are not going to like it. But when a desperate time comes, you can pretend that you are very, very angry and you are going to take a very strong action, which is going to be a problem for the other. So, the last one is deceit. And this is not recommended at all. Deceit is not recommended. Because it does sometimes get things done, but the fruits are very, very bad. It will stick to you. First, there will be a feeling of guilt in your mind that I did something wrong. I lied. I got this work done through lies. Or I blackmailed somebody. Or something like this, you see, diplomatic things. And I benefited. Somebody got, uh, you know, I caused harm. Somebody, I caused loss to somebody else. And this, from the seeker's point of view, is the lowest kind of trick that you can use. And very rarely, you may need to use it sometimes. There are consequences of doing that. So, in an order of uh, consequences, the bad consequences, uh, you can say they, they are arranged. These four things, these four tricks are arranged. So, cooperation, no consequences. There are no consequences of co cooperation because somebody has done something for you without you asking it. So, for you, there is nothing, no consequence. Your work is done. And uh, the barter or transaction has very little consequences. You can, you can see that uh, there is a cancellation of actions. Somebody did something for you, you paid money or did something else. Paying money is nothing but, you know, doing, returning the favor, that's all it is. Karma will cancel out as soon as you are paid. And I say pay a little bit more than they deserve so that their account is heavier than yours now. <laughs> Very little consequences there, but still there are a little bit. And then punishment, as you can guess, there can be consequences. If the punishment is just and fair, then probably you can get away with it. But since this is a violent method, there is violence in speech, there is violence in thought. And sometimes you will need to do real violence, physical violence. So you're causing harm to somebody, even though you can say it is justified because he was not doing that, which I wanted. But uh, that's not the proper justification. So it will have uh, consequences, a lot of consequences. And deceit, this is very dangerous. It does look like that there is no consequence for me. I lied, got the work done, got whatever I wanted, and now I'm free. But no, the, the impression has been made on the mind. The programming has happened. The conditioning has happened. Next time you're going to lie twice. Next time, ten times. The lies cannot be hidden long and the consequences start coming. And to cover them up, people lie even to hide their lies. And under the word deceit, many, many things come. Like um, knowingly doing harm and calling it uh, a service, something like this. You see, like you go to somebody and pretend that you are somebody else and get your work done. That is also deceit. That is also bhed. So you can go and say that uh, I am such and such person. I am son of this and better do my work. And they will do it. But uh, you see, it's, it's kind of very lowly act. And this will stick. This will have consequences throughout lifetime. After many, many lives, something will pop out in your life. That is why, you see, these yogis and all, they are very, very cautious, very attentive, very aware when they are doing something. What are they trying to calculate there? What will get written in my account? <laughs> whether, whether this is going to free me or whether this is going to bind me? When will it come out? In what lifetime? So, they are calculating things like this. So, in this order of... Uh, consequence of the 
magnitude of harm that it can our actions can cause to ourselves these four tricks are rated you see so for a seeker never do the deceit this is even if your work is very very important let it go don't do it because you are going to get some some short term benefit from getting your work done getting whatever you are after but very long term consequences very bad consequences for you you can think about it you can meditate and introspect about it why i'm saying that then or the punishment we should very rarely see once or twice in a lifetime and most of it should be empty punishment like a threat a very oral kind of thing that is also an action that will also cause uh, consequences something can go wrong try to punish a wrong guy and it can go very bad after that so do not get into fights now transaction it proved very very useful at least for me because you are not surrounded by angels you are not surrounded by uh, saints in this world very few people are going to cooperate with you nobody does anything for anybody here we are as a seeker as an ordinary person left with only this one mode of operation in the society that is transaction remember if somebody does something for you out of love you will need to actually return the favor you will need to become double loving you will need to become more compassionate you cannot simply say okay everybody serve me because you love me no that is <laughs> that is you know it is like deceit it's it is worse than deceit actually so there are many people like this and try to get favor favors from others because you are somebody people like you or something and you do not return it so you see even the cooperation there is a word cooperation so my duty is to return that is also a transaction but that is a transaction of a higher kind somebody did something for you because of their compassion now it is your turn to be compassionate now the other person is not going to accept anything you know not money nothing anything and now you should not pursue it you should not force that person it will become kind of punishment or something for that <laughs> you need to be careful somebody says no i don't want anything from you i just did it because this is my nature you should let go that person don't try to burden him with your action may not like it all we can do is become compassionate help somebody else you see you are all my forms if a helps me i help b it is you know a full circle now there is nobody else to return favor to there is only me so do not try to you know harass that person no 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 you did something good for me now you must come to my house and have dinner with me and that fellow will feel odd or may feel <laughs> may, may feel bad you know it's extra work now i usually do the same thing i let go of them because that is the highest kind of compassion that is the unconditional love you don't do anything for anybody that is the highest kind of love but if somebody has done something is is you know return it uh, it will be very very rare but i'm just giving you my opinion here how how to behave like this and first priority for us for seekers is to cooperate always that is the, that should be the first priority it does not matter if somebody if the other people if the other whether it is your relative your friend your office colleague your you know shopkeeper whatever it doesn't matter our first priority and including your enemies if you have enemies something is really really wrong if you hate something somebody some community some country some class some caste if there is hate in your mind something is really wrong you see then these teachings are useless for you first you you'll need to purify the mind and then these things are going to make some sense but you are already doing your purification and now you want to know how to act and that is that's what i'm saying first priority cooperation you do something for for others just because it is your nature just because you see them as my own self now you need to be very careful you see somebody comes to you and says let's rob the bank let's 
kill this person you see let's go and bomb this country uh, you will need to <laughs> think about it whether cooperation or not should i cooperate here or not you see greater good not the tiny good bigger good so it's it shouldn't be blind cooperation and the cooperation should not be out of attachment it should be out of love if uh, your wife or your uh, child says i want uh, this many uh, this much money i want to buy something expensive and then if you are attached you will spend that money if you are not attached if you are loving then you will probably not pay you will probably not give it and they will say oh you are not cooperative you you are a seeker but you behave something else so you just ignore what they are saying because you see they are using deceit to get the work done from you once you know that how to use these things you will start recognizing these same uh, modes of behavior in others how they try to get things out of you how they try to get their work done out of you how they use you and they will use the same four methods there is nothing else actually and you can judge the character of the person by simply observing what they use so the lowliest kind of person is going to use deceit a little one step higher is going to use force is a punishment is force and uh, a little bit reasonable person will barter transit will do transaction give me this i'll give you that and the highest kind of person your highly evolved person will simply cooperate serve you so in your your behavior is now reflected there actually this is my experience also if you are cooperative there is a very good chance that the other person will rise to your level and will cooperate with you at least they will, they will speak sweetly but do not accept the favors if you do favors on somebody do not accept it back because it will go in your account there will be a bond now so we don't want bonds we are trying to end the bondage isn't it we are trying to break our ties with the world so that's why i told you let go of the person who has served you let go of the person who has cooperated with you do not burden him with your favor if he is a yogi he will not like it so better ask if you, if you are in doubt you should ask who oh, you have done this thing do you want something how can i help you it's just formality and if they say no 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 i don't want anything you just let go you see and same thing we should do in uh, our case do not try to i mean do not try to take the favor you have helped somebody because it's your nature don't take the burden of their favor it's not recommended in the karmic from the karmic point of view so you see i learn i'm learning these things as a progress because you see nobody teaches us these things can somebody recall if their teachers if their parents if their whatever have told you these things even your guru is not going to tell you these things <laughs> just like i said the guru has a very kind answer a pet answer be loving compassionate actually that is the right answer but you see it does not work so from the point of view of the seeker the first priority goes to cooperation the second goes to transaction which will work and the third and fourth are not recommended punishment and, uh, and deceit um, use very very sparingly never without any reason only when extremely needed only when it's a matter of survival what wins survival or spiritual knowledge what wins tell me from your experience i'll tell you my experience survival always wins <laughs> not, you will need to be kind of a big saint to sacrifice your life for others that's why we remember them even after thousands of years this is not going to happen for an ordinary seeker so survival wins and these things they work and mostly transaction works you be cooperative to others and you pay them back through any means you see even if it's your friend he's not going to take money uh, do something for them and uh, that will even out the balance 
so um, that was a kind of uh, long answer about what are the possible ways of getting some things done and if you become aware of your actions you will see that these four modes are being employed and then now you can with full awareness prefer the best one that will purify the mind and uh, actually that will make your life very easy in the society that is my experience you will be surrounded with the kind of uh, people that you are i mean your nature will be reflected in the others so if you are using deceit all the time then you will be surrounded by that kind of people it is you can say law of attraction if you are using power you are using force punishment you will find that kind of people will love you <laughs> you see you will gather enemies enemy enmity is nothing love isn't it i keep thinking of you killing you so indifference is better and i have seen that transaction works very nicely clears your account also uh, you will need to earn money or you will need to become useful for others for that and um, cooperation yes that is the default action 